A common question I've seen across my Raspberry Pi videos is whether you can use the Raspberry Pi for mining cryptocurrency. The answer to this question is yes, it's technically possible, but not in a way that's going to make you any amount of money. In fact, you'll be lucky if you ever make enough money to recoup the cost of the hardware. With that said, instead of just showing you how to mine cryptocurrency on a Raspberry Pi, I thought why not make it a bit more interesting and make it solar powered as well. That way we don't even have to worry about offsetting the electricity costs associated with running the miner. Now since we're already heading down a road to no profit, there's not much point in going overkill and trying to solar power a cluster of pies or even a single Pi 4. I'm rather going to try and get away with building the cheapest setup possible to show you how long it would take to pay it back and start making some money. So let's get started. The brains behind this project is going to be a Pi Zero W. It's one of the most power efficient Raspberry Pis available and it's got built-in Wi-Fi so we don't need to worry about powering any external dongles or running network cables. To start out we need to figure out how much power our Pi Zero W uses when it's running and when it's connected to Wi-Fi so that we know what size solar panel we're going to need to power it. I'm going to start by preparing the SD card for the Pi. We're going to install Raspberry Pi OS Lite, as we'll be running this as a headless setup, and we'll then access the Pi over the Wi-Fi network for any additional work we need to do on it. I usually just use the Raspberry Pi imager to burn the image onto the SD card. Once this is completed, you'll need to remount the disk and open up your boot directory. You'll then need to copy in a blank file called SSH with no extension, and a WPA supplicant text file which tells your Pi how to connect your Wi-Fi network. You'll need to change this from a text to a config file before dropping it into the boot directory. Now I'm going to boot the Pi up on the SD card which will then connect to my Wi-Fi network. It looks like our Pi uses just under 100 milliamps when idling and this spikes to around 130 milliamps when using Wi-Fi. So we'll need a panel which is able to produce at least one watt, and we need a little extra for when clouds come over, or when it's not in full sun. I'm going to use this 5 watt panel which is designed to charge mobile phones. This will provide up to 1 amp at 5 volts. Next we need a charge controller and a battery. Now you might be thinking, why don't I just plug the Pi directly into the USB port on the solar panel? I could do that, and it would probably work when the panel is in full sun. But if there's any disturbance to the light on the panel, then the panel would immediately stop providing power to the Pi and the Pi would reboot. Obviously this would only need to happen a couple of times before the SD card is corrupted. So we add the charge controller to take the power from the panel and use it to charge a battery, and then use the battery to power the Pi. This way when there's an interruption to the solar panel's power, the Pi is still powered by the battery. This charge controller comes from DF Robot. I'll link to it in the video description. It takes the input from the solar panel and uses it to charge a 3.7 volt lithium ion or lithium polymer battery cell. It then also provides a regulated 5 volt supply to the USB port and to some header pins. It's also got a number of safeguards to protect the devices and an over discharge feature to protect the battery. I'm going to be using a single 18650 lithium ion battery. This should be able to power the power for a maximum of about 8 hours. If you want the rig to be able to run through the night, then you'll need to add a second or third battery to store the additional energy from the solar panel. I'm going to connect the leads directly onto the tabs on the panel, as I suspect that there's a regulator between the USB lead and the tabs, which we don't really need. I'm going to use a multimeter to check the polarity of these tabs first, as they're not labelled. Once this is all done, you're ready to plug in the USB power cable and put it into the sun so that it can charge while it boots up. Your Pi should boot up and connect to your Wi-Fi network automatically. You'll then need to find its IP address, which can be done in a number of ways. The easiest I find is to log into my router and find it in the DHCP table. You can then access the Pi using an SSH connection using a utility like PuTTY. Log in with the default username and password, which you should probably change if you're going to be using your Pi for any period of time. Then run the usual updates and upgrades which you should always do on a fresh install. 
While your Pi ticks away at the update, we'll head over to Minergate and create an account to join a mining pool. If you don't know what a mining pool does, it's essentially a group of people who all put their resources together to collectively mine cryptocurrency. The profits are then divided among the participants based on their level of contribution to the pool. We're going to be mining Monero using a utility called CPU Miner Multi. There are a couple of other dependencies which you'll need to install before you're ready to start mining. I'll detail these in the post linked in the video description. Once they're installed, you'll need to compile the mining code. When this is all done, we're ready to start the miner and start contributing to the pool. Once it is running, you should see some figures start being displayed. These show our hash rate of our Raspberry Pi. Ours are sitting at a dismal 1.47 hashes per second, which is really bad. In order for you to be making any meaningful money from mining Monero, you need to be at least above the 100 kilo hashes per second lower limit. So we're sitting at almost 100,000 times less than this limit at the moment. Let's have a look at how much money we'd make if we could leave the setup running for a month or even a year. So at this hash rate, we'd take almost 220 years just to pay off the Raspberry Pi. So now you can see that mining on a Raspberry Pi, even with free electricity, is just not a viable way to make any extra money. I'm going to try and set something similar up on my water-cooled Raspberry Pi cluster to see how many years that would take to pay itself off. So subscribe so that you don't miss out on that, and please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it.